Well, uh, good morning and welcome to a Realty Coffee Talk. Uh, we always uh, come up with the webinars to educate our friends and to make sure everybody uh, increase their knowledge and, and expand their business businesses. So today's program is very specific to land development because in real estate, we, uh, which we are, and then we have a mortgage financing and other, all, all of um, uh, professionals are really uh, connected with each other. Whether you are a real estate agent, you are a mortgage broker, or you are a developer, you are a, fin a financial lender, a lawyer, or, uh, you know, insurance company, home inspection, appraisal, everybody is connected. So they need to learn the process, how the land development works and who are connected, how we need each other, why it's important to create a, a network. So I'm gonna do a, 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 a sort of a comprehensive uh, detail about land development. And then we, after the presentation is completed or during the uh, presentation, if you have any question, please feel free to, to ask questions. So I'm going to go and, and share my screen and I'm going to allow sound share. So let's see what we are. Okay. So going to go from here, start from here. So again, well, this is a webinar, a little bit about myself. I'm a fellow of Rural Institute of Canada and also CIPS, Certified International Property Specialist where majority of my friends are. And uh, we're going to, after the presentation, each one of you are going to introduce yourself and we're going to talk about that. I'm a founder of uh, uh, Texan Construction Inc., which is a licensed builder with SCRA. Uh, and we're going to explain that a little bit more in the program. And recording will be shared on YouTube and social media. So please keep your uh, pictures on. It's it's good to see everything, everybody's face. So first is introduction, builder license. When you are thinking about a, a, a going into construction, you always have to look about uh, building a, a new home in the province of Ontario because our jurisdiction is Ontario. Are you doing buying a land for development or you're thinking of becoming a builder, whether you are building a, a one house or you're building a subdivision? The, they need, all builder has to be licensed by housing construction regulatory authorities called SCRA as a builder under new home construction licensing act. So this is the law. It used to be Arian Corporation but now they have divided the construction, tenure, registration, warranty away from the licensing. So now SCRA is a regulator that gives you the uh, license to practice. Next step is vendor. What is vendor? Vendor is the person, if he's a landowner or a, or a builder, who wishes to pre-sale or pre-construction sale of a new home, never been occupied, they must be licensed as a vendor from ICRA. So that means there are two things. A builder who will build the house according to the law in, in Ontario, and, the, and also he or she wants to, to sell the uh, uh, pre-sale or pre-construction home they need to have a vendor license. The, the contravention of both acts will result in a very significant financial disciplinary action by the regulator, perhaps a revocation or suspension of license. That means you cannot build a home unless you have a license. Only exception would be if the person, the landowner is creating a, a principal residence for their, themselves then they are also managing and controlling their own activities. And that is, then they are not selling it. They're going to occupy it for personal use. They may be exempt. They have to write to, uh, to the regulator to confirm that they can do that or not. But that's what the exception is. 
Contract home is the where a license builder is, is authorized to uh, enter into a construction contracts to build homes or land owned by the landowner and provide taking warranty as required under Ontario New Home Warranties Act. So now that means some, some landowner, they own a lot and they want to build a, a, their home, they will hire a builder to build the home because there are 11 development uh, 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 activities that they have to go through in order to achieve uh, ready for construction. And um, th that's the whole purpose of today, to give you all the steps that is necessary. So construction project planning. So this is very important. Building a new home is a complex undertaking, irrespective of the type of the home or building. Tuxedi requires a lot of time in planning. Planning is a key for, uh, for, for the project. You need to have a detailed designing of the project that you want to build. And, and a builder can help to, to realize that by creating drawings and modeling or 3D, that way you are able to visualize it before you spend money on construction. Obviously, interior and exterior finishes. So uh, uh, scheduling, cost estimate, and financial investment. This is where every step of the way, when you are planning a project, you meet the builder, and I'm going to give you a list of things that when you meet a builder and you're planning your development, whether it's a personal use, home that you want to build for yourself, or a subdivision, high-rise building, whatever, is very, very important that you meet with a with the builder and, and plan because you need the financing and that's where financing people come in. And when you have an architect, engineer, planning, a planner, environmental, many, many things. So we're going to go through the step-by-step -step to show you. The first step to a successful construction project is to develop an extensive plan. And this is part and parcel. If you spend some amount of money now and visualize what you want to build, then, then you will be able to see that by creating a 3D modeling and you can create a now artificial intelligence and designing tools can create actually a visual or virtual uh, uh, showing of your finished product before you spend money. So this is very important that uh, that is done. Now, start to finish. This presentation, you will, we will discuss us, all aspect from the acquisition of land to the start to finish of building your dream home or a project. So normally we are talking about housing and that's why I just limited it there for, for this purpose. And uh, so we will continue to do that. So again, it come back here, acquisition of land. That's the number one step when we're talking about the first step is realizing your dream of building your home is to consider the acquisition of land in a geographic location that is did they say it? that is suitable for your family's needs if we're trying to build a custom home you have you have resources and you want to build a dream home so the most important thing is to get engaged with a, a builder because due diligence on the project side is required. For realtors, it's very important when you are acquiring a land and you want to make sure that that land is suitable for development and you have those conditional period when you perform due diligence, that is where you should be using a builder to normal construction like we have a home inspection. That doesn't work. You need to have engineers to review the site and we're going to go through the list of things that we have to do so you understand what that means. The, the most crucial step in building construction is acquiring land for the project. Now, location, land, location. This is where the location should be well suited for the project requirement. If you are building a subdivision, or you are helping someone to buy a subdivision land, you have to look at many, many areas. 
and make sure the accessibility, transportation, utilities, all those things are available. So before the land acquisition, it's best to conduct a feasibility study to ensure the land is strategically located and is free. Because you look at the future costing issues, whether it's going to appreciate or not, where the location is, transportation, all the amenities that are needed for the future development. What is the city plan? So there are many, many things that come into development and that you have to raise the question. And this is why it's very important, the location. Um, and ultimately, you need to, you're going to need a maximum because he enjoys the mortgage. So it is also necessary to evaluate the project cost effectiveness before kick, uh, kick off the project. So costs become issue. Who is paying for the money? Who's paying for the down payment? Who's paying for the mortgages? How the funding cash flow is happening? So there are many things that involve so before you even think about uh, building it. So I am going to show you these steps that I have created for this purpose so you understand how important it is for land acquisition and what steps that you are doing. So the first thing you want to do is initial meeting with the builder. That's number one. The initial meeting is important with the builder to understand the process from the acquisition of land to securing a building permit to start construction. So acquisition of land, and that, that means you are going through the zoning process, rezoning, site plan amendment, uh, and approvals, building permit, everything. Then you, when the, you have a building permit, then you have to go to the construction. So there is a financing plays a big role. If you, don't, if you have a cash flow issues, it's very difficult to do a project. So this meeting helps familiarize process such as, so I'm going to give you the element when we're talking about this. The site visit for due diligence. This is the most important thing that you want to hire an engineer to go site because they have to do so much calculation and we're going to check to make sure suitability if there are due diligence required as a part of a heritage property or there is a, a floodplain area <clears throat> or, or other things that are part of it. Uh, if you want to build your own home, you want to, what are the setbacks are? Uh, what, how high building can you build? Uh, what is the maximum calculation of uh, the uh, size of a house that you want to build? What are the setbacks, front, front, backyard, or, or, or side? So these are the important thing is to hire an engineer to do that, and that's what my company provides. Now, determine, determine zoning compliance. When you are trying to develop a project or, or a house, for example, if you're buying a a land, it's very important that the zoning is in compliance. If the zoning is not in compliance, that means you have to apply for official plan amendment. That means zoning has to be changed. So every city has its own bylaws. In, in, in Canada, we have a planning act under which all municipality create their own uh, bylaws. And those are the ones set the standard and plan activities within the city. So zoning determination is very important, and the builder does that. Uh, he, he or she will do that. A realtor should know about it. It's very important for everyone to, to demand when you are even giving a, a financing for it. You can say, is your property in compliance to the zoning? That means if it's not, it could be, but they will require certain steps and investment and time. That's why it's very important for each one of you who are involved in the financing or purchasing, zoning compliance is very important. Now, site consulting meeting with city. So when we have done the due diligence, we have done uh, zoning uh, compliance, we go to site consulting meeting with city. City has a, 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 a development application meeting. They charge small fee and they invite all department and you create conceptual drawings and everything. This is what you want to do. So city brings all people, uh, building, uh, zoning, traffic, uh, water, sewer, depending is the region, everybody 
uh, to come and sit down and give some feedback. And they will give you a list of things that needs to be done in order to develop that site. I'm talking about just a, uh, you if you are doing a swearance, separating one land into two two lands or three three units, or you are uh, uh, build, rebuilding your own home, you are uh, having creating a subdivision, creating a uh, a, a high rise building. This is what you meet with the CD, and they give you a list of things. Now, why is it, it when you are building a home? This is very important. Somebody say, "I want to build a ten thousand square feet home." How would you know that you can you can build that or not? This is why the due diligence and zoning compliance that we do in consultation with the city, we create that uh, square footage calculation and confirmation. And this is not, it's a specialized field. It's done by, by the engineer or planner. And we have a team of those who will do that. Because if you buy a land, let's say you're a realtor, your client wants to buy a, a, a land and assuming, they are assuming that uh, we can build 10,000 square feet home. But because of setback zoning requirement, to, to be in compliance, you cannot build that house. So you bought a land and due diligence, you didn't do a proper due diligence. Then how are you going to build that 10,000 square feet home? This is why it's very important to hire an engineer to calculate that. We calculate that based on uh, the zoning and setback for the specific property. Now, Project information is applicable normally when we are working on a project, let's say not a small one house, but project information. We talk about all the details about the project. What, how many number of units? Uh, we have a landscaping, irrigation, you have a, uh, uh, utilities. And let's assume that you are creating a hundred uh, homes in a site plan. So you have to create a report which include from A to Z, from acquisition to the disposition of the property, and it's called performa. And we create this report for, for those who are involved with the project. If you are building even a one house, you will create a project report because you want to know uh, lot information, the size of the land, uh, zoning requirements, and calculation of those square footage, and how much time is going to take to do that, and how much it's going to cost what is the commencement date? What is the completion date? Taking a warranty. So this is a summary of the project, which is very important when you work with a builder, we create this, uh, this form for you. Now, most importantly, any of you who are involved with the acquisition of the property, they'll make sure you have a property survey. Lots of people don't have a, a property survey. It is, it, 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 if, if, if the land or the property is seven years or more, old, then it's possible that you will not find a survey. And, and you, there are so many sources that we use to, to hope to buy one. Because site survey show you the width, length of the of the property, where your boundary starts and where its boundary ends, on the north, east, west, south, all areas. And also it shows you location of your house, where the house current house is built. Let's assume you have a house, it's a bungalow, and maybe 1,000 square feet. Now you want to build 3,000 square feet home. But survey will tell you location of the footing of your house. And this is why it's very important, because you know where the border lines are. And based on that, the engineer can help to calculate the square footage if the line survey. So if you don't have it, this will be additional cost. Depending on the size of the lot, in the house, I would say 2,000 to 2,500 sometime. If it's a bigger lot, you're talking about the land, other area, it may cost you 5,000, 10,000, depends on the size of the land. This is very, very important. You will need the property survey, even if you are developing a, a completely new uh, site. For example, let's say in, in a rural area, you have agricultural land, and the city has planned to create this as a development. 
future development. So they have already zoned that future development, but, but you still have to apply for it. So if you have a survey of your property, uh, then, then you are able to say, okay, I already have a survey. This is where I, the architect and the planner will put location where the entry from the main road is and then also create the roads and street lights and each lot uh, they have created. So this is survey will help. Otherwise, it's going to cost money. The concept drawings and floor plan. This is where when you have decided, yes, I really want something going. So mostly clients that come with a pencil, they have a draw some lines. They this is the concept they have in in mind. But we help to put together a concept into drawings and floor plans, how house look. For example, you're building a 10,000 square feet home and how they're going to look. So they will provide uh, information to us what they want. And then we put together those drawings and floor plans so that sh show the elevations and, and everything. So this is where we convert a... a the concept of, of our clients into a floor plan and drawings. So uh, zoning application, if applicable, if some, some prop, uh, properties are identified as a development property, that means uh, either there is a bare land or th there was some uh, other use as a, or they are designated as a development land, that means in the in the city official plan, it shows as a development land. So we need to submit a zoning application. That means we need to change the zoning from a commercial or agriculture to a residential development. So this has to be a process. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of work involved with this. You have a site plan uh, process and zoning. So zoning is official plan amendment. That's where you change the the zoning of the property from a development to actually a residential project. Now, site plan application, zoning certification. So after zoning application, site plan application is where we will submit the drawings and get a zoning certificate. So site plan approval is required from the city in order to redevelop a site whether it's a one house, 10 houses, high rise, whatever, that site plan requires a planner input, a lot of very detailed projects. So we call them site plan and zoning certification is one. Site plan is approved. You have a certification of zoning that now this we can build what is in the zone now. So in order to process the site plan and the, the, it's called geotechnical, a, a geotechnical report. This report is identify you that this particular site is suitable for construction or building. And this is an infill site or it's a bare land because geotechnical report, because they need to look at the soil to make sure this soil is suitable for building what is intended in the uh, site plan and zoning application. Sometimes, most 99.9%, if you are dealing with a multiple uh, 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 sites or uh, subdivision, environmental studies are required. Traffic studies are required. Noise studies are required. This is important because they want to see the traffic. So we need the engineers to create this report. So it costs money. So when you are doing a site, site development, there's a lot of report involved. Traffic studies, how much traffic is coming because let's assume you have a land and you have a, uh, a old building, small building, or maybe a residential building that uh, land is big, you have a house. Now, after 15, 20, 30 years, it has become part of the big city now. So they're saying it's not worth to keep a small bungalow there. We can build a high rise based on zoning uh, bylaws. So now you have to do all these studies because your utilities, your water, sewer system, electricity, everything will increase. Your water connections, everything will increase 
because of size and, and usage of the new uh, new zoning. So those studies are required. When you meet uh, with the city, they'll give you a list of things that you have to do. Now, no objection certificate or a, a permit for related authorities organization. So some, <clears throat> some of these, for example, if you have dealing with the Peel region uh, that deals with the highways and, and the water resource system. You need to have the permission because do they have the capacity to accommodate the additional need of your property? So when you are real estate, you're buying a property. So it's part of due diligence. When you have an engineer working with you, and, and this is where we are as a builder, we are able to help you on that to make sure in the due diligence, everything is satisfied. And you need to get a no objection certificate from the authorities that they have no objection to this development because our utilities are. Remember, there's a, we're gonna talk about development charges, many other things. This is very, very important for all of you to understand that this, this area, if somebody comes to you, give me financing, and then you say, you know, do you have all the, and uh, no objection certificate from the authorities because you will be connecting your sewer system, water, water system, electricity, telephone, cables, everything. And if you have a, a project and it doesn't have the facility or city say, I will cost you more money. For example, if you have a traffic light and you need a U-turn or left turn, so you might have to give a contribution to the city for bringing a, a traffic signal to your property. Let's give an example, I was working on a project where we have to contribute uh, for a sig significant amount uh, regarding uh, uh, the traffic signal. Architecture drawing. Now you are going to progressing, everything seems like it's moving. So architect will have to create all the drawings and, and give you uh, what step how is going to be built. And this is why it's very comprehensive drawings of work. Now we are in a state, we have no problem and we are proceeding with the, with the drawings. Mechanical design and calculation. These are, again, you have HVAC system, you have mechanical design it has to be designed, a calculation has to be made to meet the capacity of the building. And, and make sure you have a, your air conditioning uh, units or all, all those are calculated and, and, and design is approved, okay? Now your building permit application. Now we have done that, architect drawing, mechanical drawing, everything, civil, structural engineering, everything is done. So building permit application is the next step after this because we went through the certain step and we submit application and to the city, because without it is, you always do that building permit after site plan approval has been obtained. Mm -hmm. And now after, uh, and some time people will submit simultaneously because they have a good assess assessment to make sure they can get approval from the, uh, from the city. And to save time, they will do simultaneously. It's very important. The development fee calculation. This is another thing is, and now if you have a house, for example, a bungalow, which was a thousand square feet, you already have the utilities and everything. So depending on the, the sewer system, water lines, electricity, other stuff, that uh, development fee will be calculated based on the size of the unit. Let's assume we have a thousand square feet. Now you are making a 3,500 square feet. So most cases, most likely, you will get credit for the 1,000 square feet, but you will end up paying more for the difference. So you end up paying, let's say, 2,500 square feet more development fee because it may require to change your sewer system. It may be because you are increasing the capacity of the, the, the inflow, outflow for your house. So you have electricity, you have a sewer system, you have, a, you know, all, all these utilities that you need to do. 
So you have to form, and, and they will calculate based on the architect engineer calculation. But the development fee is given by by the city. City once they have they're ready to give you a building permit, they will tell you how much that is. Now we the when we have submitted everything we have a constantly back and forth communication with the city to secure the building permit without so if you have a a, a current house on the property you have to, to get a demo, demolition permit permit older home may have some material that is not safe you have to make sure you hire proper demolition company to dispose of all the all the material and then obviously if you are creating a are you using any old design of old footing or foundation wall or you are completely removing and putting a brand new so there is always communication depending on each site and each location there is a constant communication with the city in order to get the the, the building permit now utility disconnect and approvals and this I remember, if you have an existing home, all utility has to be disconnected in order for them to uh, perform the demolition. And the city will, inspector will come and check that out to make sure everything is disconnected. And then you have get a new approval to reconnect after the construction has been approved and you have a building permit. Minor variation is required. Let's assume <clears throat> that you... You want to build uh, additional or a, a, a bigger home. And this you have, for example, you set back on the sideway is about a meter and a half probably in Messiah. So let's assume that you have you are short of about three inches or five inches set back. So you go to committee of adjustment to ask them, say, I'm building a 3,500 square feet home. Uh, if I increase this, it will reduce the setback on the side on the side from 1.5 meter to 1.3 meter or 1.25 uh, meter. So you just cannot go ahead and proceed with the uh, construction. You will not get a building permit. You go to the committee of adjustment because building inspector will be coming to to the site when you start excavation, your footings are there. They will be checking to make sure the foundation wall is built. So minus variation, there is a committee committee of adjustment. They will give you approval and then you are able to, to build that. Without that, you cannot get your building permit. A building permit issued. Now we went through the whole process. We got the building permit now. Building permit said demolition. We have to safeguard some trees. If you are retaining it, some trees that you need to remove, you have to have a permit to remove the trees. You have a landscaping. So they're all very detailed stamp drawings on, on, on it. They give you building permits and you have paid all the development fee. This is very, very important for you. You will not get building permit unless you have paid for it. And uh, regardless of whether it's a residential or a commercial project. Now, they, what they do is they will stamp all the drawings that you have submitted initially as a part of your submission. They will they will approve it, stamp it, now ready for construction. So these are drawings, very detailed drawings, and you we're going to go through the a quickly. Uh, I added a few things for the construction side so you have a little bit of idea other than just the, de the development side, uh, land development. Hand over to the project team now. You got the building permit, you got a construction drawing, now you're handing it over to the project team. Project team is the one that is going to take the construction. So we're gonna quick, quickly go through that too. So in the beginning, like I said, you have engineering and design services, so you just don't sign any contract. First contract is to the architectural engineering design services. So you finalize that to make sure your conceptual floor plans, elevation drawings, and rendering if required. Rendering is about exactly digitally, you can see how it's gonna look like before 
you spent two, two, three million dollars on your house, for example. So you spent twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars to get everything done. It depends on the size of the project. So you are able to see how it's going to look like. And we some remarkable artist has created so much thing, and we have that service available to you. So that means you have complete review of everything before you invest two, three million dollars. You can spend about twenty-five thousand dollars to get everything done. So next step is to when you have you agree to proceed with your concept drawings and rendering, the next step is to provide engineering services to secu uh, the secure site plan and zoning approval. And we went through that utility disconnection and demolition and building permit. We went through that process. So when site plan is approved, pending building permit, taking warranty enrollment process. This is where your house, let's say it's a one house, uh, a no builder, can build a house unless they are registered with taking program because we're going to show you if you plan to sell it or you want to live it. And this is where determination is made. So basically, we are enrolling the program. Taking enrollment. A licensor will, will apply to enroll the home in the taking warranty program. It's called qualification for enrollment. QFE process with Tarian. Tarian is responsible for registration of homes that are built by a builder. Now, there's some exception. Again, I said about if landowners say, I want to manage my own site. I want to build my own home. That's a different story. And obviously, he cannot, if he hires a builder to do certain project, he's not uh, managing it. So this is very important for you to, to know. A summary of project detail is provided along with the site plan approval, approved drawings, and soil test report. So they, the, uh, the Tarion will do a very thorough uh, investigation and due diligence before they they approve it and uh, going through qualification for enrollment process. Now, once Tarion issue notification of confirmation, that means they are satisfied, and I'm going to show you what steps that we have to go through with the with the Tarion in order to in order to to get this now the builder can proceed with the paying uh, paying the deposit once the enrollment is approved they they will will pay for the security and then you will be able to uh, proceed with the uh, with the uh, construction let me move this is here somewhere Okay, so that means that we have to pay a security deposit and then we are able to sign a construction contract with a landowner. This is strictly for, for the land that is owned by a landowner and you are building as a builder. These are the, when you are enrolling with this, we have a vendor, life, vendor agreement. This is strictly for the person who is selling it. Remember I mentioned that you cannot sell it pre-construction unless you have vendor license. And this vendor agreement has to be done with Tarion warranty. If you are a builder, builder agreement has to be signed because you are building for someone who owns the land. Or you are vendor and builder agreement if I, for example, own the land and I'm building and selling so I am a licensed builder, and that's where, where you execute this agreement. And then they, the Tarion will take a guarantee or indemnity because they want to make sure when you are signing an agreement with a consumer or landowner, you have the financial capacity to complete the project, and you indemnify uh, the Tarion against any lawsuits. So they will always look at your personal net worth statement. This is about the builder or condominium project profile form. This is for high rise building. And, and there should be a deposit trust agreement required freehold project with early termination clause. Now they are saying there are so many, you remember that uh, cooling period we have a 10 days. This is why it's very important that uh, there are situation where uh, the project is not completing where uh, the, the the builder or 
or the, the buyer, for example, and this is not about the land who owns it. This is about pre-hold project, which is which uh, the the vendor and builder license is with the with the the builder, and that's where the certain clauses are to be added there. So, in order to get a housing uh, competency, uh, uh, actually a housing competency requirement, you need to have financial planning and management, legal issues in housing, business planning and management, fundamentals, project management, supervision, customer service, and new home. These are the education requirement, construction technology and building codes in Ontario. And I did this uh, before I got my license. Now, after enrollment with Terian, and this is, you went through the process, uh, construction contracts, terms and conditions are finalized between the landowner and the builder through their respective legal counsel, including financial loss compensation for so the law provides that if, if a builder is delayed and you're talking about land own, landowner who have hired a builder, they have a damages clause compensation for delaying project two, three hundred dollars a day, or whatever, they agree in the terms of the agreement. Obviously, there is always provision to extend a certain period of time, but obviously they need to finish the project on time. Normally, the commencement date begins when all the building permits are issued as discussed in the initial meeting. Remember that we have went through 11 steps there. And a Tarion worksheet, it has a requirement from Tarion to add that to the construction contract. Remember, construction contract is about that is land owned by somebody else that you are building it. And a copy of the contract is provided to Tarion. So agreement is provided so no if the builder is also the vendor and they have owned the land and they're building it, that's a totally different story. This is regarding construction contracts. Okay. So now begin the construction. We're going to go quickly because site supervision and monitoring, you got to start the mobilization process. And the first step is to excavation and foundation. And we hire en en engineers and surveyors to come and they mark, it and, uh, mark where the footing will be based on the drawings approved. Excavation happened, footing, foundation is poured. And then when all inspections are done and approved, the, the framing begins. And that's where the framing work is completed, inspected and accepted by, the, by when the framing is done, Basically, your exterior structure is almost done. Then you start finishing it. Uh, normally, when the framing is done, they will also uh, put the, the you know roof on it, and and therefore they can start finishing exterior windows and doors and and install that uh, everything else and uh, finishes such as stucco, brick, or stone, whatever needs to be done. So this is a in another details uh, program that I am planning to introduce later on to give you more details about each step of the way. But I added it for your information that what steps that we go to. Interior finishes. Once all inspection are complete and workmanship is accepted, dry volume begins, all interior finishes are complete as specified in the contract. This is according to the contract that is signed, executed. Now, when you are a financing this deal or you're working with a lender, they want to know, do you have a signed contract? When you plan to commence the construction, when you go, because they will be giving a progress payment uh, and they have to make the payment to the builder. So they will be drawing the money. And I, and this is where the construction funding uh, will become uh, an issue to make sure that, that there's adequate resources available. Obviously then when you're, Drywalling, interior finish is done, then you have a kitchen, bath, all the fixture needs to be stored. Then you have a flooring and lighting fixture. These are the next step. And finally, the entire house is painted according to the builder's tender paint, unless there's an upgrade involved. Now, occupancy permit. That's where, where the city will inspector will come and inspect and say, yes, everything is fine. And, and they give you... Uh, building permit for occupy. Now, before that happened, 
the builder will do inspection of the property to make sure uh, the, the comprehensive inspection of the home will be conducted to identify deficiencies so they can be fixed before calling client for PDI, pre-delivery inspection. So that is done. Pre-delivery inspection is done and uh, a, a thorough walkthrough of the home led by the your builder. It is one of the landowner. Uh, first opportunity to view completed home before uh, you take position. So then we have a, a, a you will see that it, that is the day your warranty commencement begin from the day of the PDI. So welcome home, homeowner.com. So now because of sophistication, transformation of technology, online uh, uh, accessibility, so Tarian has all, you can go online and register yourself. I'm the owner, I have taken position. And then Builder will give you a package uh, created for this purpose. Homeowners are directed to visit Tarian.com and register and learn about the warranties for the new homes. So in, in brief, we have one year warranty. The coverage begins on the day of possession and the last for one year from the date and include items such as defects in work and, and material and unauthorized substitution. What they're saying is if you sign a contract that you need a, a granite countertop, you just cannot change it to quartz or you cannot change to laminate. You cannot substitute a, 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 a material that was included in the contract. You have to have approval from your client even if it's a, a, a custom home. So this is very, very important for you to understand that. So one year is finishing, you are required, there is a grace period, now addition 10 days, that you can submit your uh, online. Everything is online now. Two years warranty, and this, remember that new construction, new home, never been occupied. And there are definitely, very big definition from ICRA about the home, the landowner, and what qualify for team warranty not to not qualify. Many issues. Those are very extensive uh, discussions that we will going to add separate seminar for that. Two years warranty. Two year includes such as water penetration, heating, and electrical. This coverage begin on the same on the home's data possession, even the home is sold, okay? So, and, and this is, that means you may have sold your house to somebody else. This will still apply because warranty, there are two things. There is a builder license, there is a unit license or registration or enrollment. And there are two numbers that go with the property, not with the owner. So you have a seven-year major structural defect warranty. And <clears throat> and a seven-year warranty covers major structural uh, structural defects, MSDS, and begins on the date you take position of the home, result in a failure of structural load-bearing element of the building, masterly, uh, materially, and adversely affect the ability of a structural load-bearing element. So this covers that seven-year warranty. So feedback, again, builder always seek feedback from certified client to continuously improve service to their clients and customer. Satisfaction, absolute satisfaction of client is the goal of the quality builder to maintain its reputation in the mar marketplace. Advantage, this is uh, uh, ad ad adaptation of technology to optimize efficiency to remain competitive is the desire of all builders. Now, key performance indicator, strategy. Uh, the builder strategy is to build quality homes beyond the industry standards in a timely manner keeping in mind the cost efficiency and, uh, and optimize workmanship and productivity. Objective, a builder objective is to build quality home without within the budget in a timely manner without compromising quality. Evaluation, a good builder always review 
and evaluate performance of its workforce and feedback it, it receives from clients to improve performance. Performance, a builder can, continues to review performance on past work successfully and continues to implement and same protocol to optimize efficiency. So seek help. Diversify your portfolio. This is whether you are a real estate agent, you are a broker, you are a, a, a you know a, any field a, a related to construction, related to real estate. You, you see, you need help if you need uh, you, if if you have a client who wants to build a home or build a, get expert advice and consult with a licensed builder and vendor before acquiring land to develop or build home or a building. This is opportunity. There is a shortage of housing in our province, Ontario, and it's always a good idea to explore opportunity to diversify your portfolio. Because most of the project builders, they do provide some incentive for a for fee. As long as it's disclosed, we do that too. If, if they're disclosed to the client and you get compensated, whether it's a mortgage agent or you are a, a real estate professional, there's always opportunity for each one of you. So this is, again, thank you for attending. I appreciate the value of your feedback. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Realty Coffee Talk. And, and I'm going to give you a little bit about the company. This is Tech Section Construction. I'm going to go very quickly. And we are licensed builders. And uh, so you will know. Uh, and, and this is the license you have to displace. And this is the Tech Section Construction. I got it on June 7 this year because I, I have a license with somebody else before. So value through engineering, that's my concept. We des provide designing services, zoning, building permits, construction engineering. And we to give you summary of engineering. This is available on my website. You can go to tixon.ca and this talks about uh, your uh, uh, construction, the steps that we have to take. We I explained you a little bit. And this is a zoning. Again, I already explained that. And this is a building permit. And then you have design services. And you have a contract. Thank you for watching. I'm going to stop this. How do you think? You have any comment? Please open your speak uh, mic and we can talk. Any question you have? Open your mic. Hi, Alexander. How are you? Leslie, you can open your mic too. Oh. Alexander, can you hear me? Can you speak? Leslie, can you speak? Say hi. You have any questions? Uh, nothing for now. <laughs> Sorry. It was a good, inter uh, it was a quite informative uh, session. Okay, let's turn this off. Sorry about that. Oh, God. People start calling already. <laughs> uh, uh, Leslie, do you have any questions? Uh, your, mic, your mic is off. Your mic is off. Yeah. All right. There you go. All right. Thank you. Um, no, your presentation was actually spot on. It was wonderful. And... Um, you know, it's music to my ears to see that you're doing what you're doing because this is the business I was in before I actually got into resale. Um, for 15 years, I did building from ground up. So you're absolutely spot on on everything that you do. And I really appreciate that. And uh, it's given me inspiration um, to continue. Yes, with, absolutely. Um, Thanks. Thank you very much. The idea is that, you know, we as a real estate professional are really community and city and nation builders. And 
but we are just buying and selling only, but we're not uh, uh, availing opportunities where you can network, create a referral program, and, and, and do things is very important that you should do. Uh, Alexander, thank you very much. He's an FRI, a good friend of mine, member of the Real Estate Institute of Canada. Can you, can you tell a little bit about yourself, Alexander? Can you speak? Your sound is not coming. I think he has a problem. Uh, he put a comment. Let's see. Okay. So he has a problem. Robert, are you there, Robert? Yes, I am. Yeah, okay. Thank you for the uh, presentation. How, how do how, how do you feel? Do you have any questions? No questions. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining it. Uh, say hi. Do you have any questions? No, that was a wonderful informative session, which uh, we had a lot of new information, which I came to learn today. And uh, the, like, the real estate was is entirely a new concept for me. So a lot of new learnings. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it, it was really very wonderful. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Also, Seha has joined my um, uh, Canada Express mortgage. She's working with me as a a mortgage agent level number one, and she's she's a, a very young professional. He has a lot of experience in business financing, and I think it's a right move for her to uh, work with uh, Maxim, who is our mortgage broker. I think he has to leave. He tax me, and uh, she will be doing financing, but she will have to finish the level two yeah. in order to get the private lending. But she will be working with the lenders. So. Uh, uh, Alex, uh, Alexander, can you speak now? Something is wrong with him. Can you speak? Here, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, finally we got to hear your voice. <laughs> okay, it's, yeah, my mic's uh, broken. I, I, I need to, I don't know, I need to update my... Uh, I need to update something on my computer, but uh, something's so, definitely broke. How was your per how he uh, Alexander is a fellow of Rules Institute of Canada? He's FRI. I'm FRI. He's FRI. And yeah. tell me of what? How was the presentation? Do you any? You think you can benefit from it? Can you can you hear me right now? Yes. Yes. Working finally. Okay. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I I came in. I joined late. I had a meeting and I couldn't couldn't uh, cut out of there. Uh, early enough, but uh, sorry for uh, jumping in a little later than I should have. Um, but yeah, I found the last part, you know, very informative about, you know, the tear and warranty and the timeline of things. I think that's, you know, that's important to know because it's, it's, you know, these are things we need to, you know, educate our own clients about too, right? So it, it was a good refresher. Um, I mean, do, do you have a recording of this by any chance? Yes, we, I have recorded it. We will be putting in a YouTube. Okay. Um, if I, I think I'll have to review this uh, video from the start. <laughs> okay. But, so when you review it, please uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I think you did. I also did. put some feedback on the YouTube channel. That will help us uh, to, uh, to, uh, to move forward. And okay, I, I'll next, leave it <laughs> Recently, we have a flood in, in our city because of raining. So the next episode is about how to manage the flood or backup sewer system. I I went through this because this is the amazing uh, e event that I went through and I understand what the steps are. And uh, we are receiving a lot of calls for that. So how to manage flood uh, and, and uh, restoration. So that would be the next topic. I should be scheduling it probably next two weeks. We can talk about flood and restoration. Because this is a sewer backup into your house and you have a problem. Uh, and not about the hurricane, but it's about flooding your basement or, or your house.
something happens. We're going to talk about that. So, uh, Leslie, you want to say something about yourself for one minute so we can each one of them say it and we can record and close the program. Open mic. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Thank you, yes. Um, about me, I'm with Century 21 Redwood Realty in Northern Virginia. Um, and prior to going into full brokerage, although I've been licensed since 1988, um, I did work for builders. I did build homes. I had panelizing. Uh, I didn't build panelizing. I built panelizing, but I did not have the panelizing company. Um, so uh, everything from soup to nuts. But what's so fascinating about this is that it is so needed to know about the planning of, of building homes. But more importantly, um, the best place to understand most of everything is to start off with a comprehensive plan and know the planning knowing knowing the planning department and becoming very good friends with them then you can start understanding what is going to be commercial land residential land land that's not in conservancy land that's available to build how you can build it what you can build where it is also getting in touch with the uh, the Department of Transportation to find out where the roads are going to be if they're not there yet. And then also the uh, power companies to find out if they're going to be putting in extra power lines and if, in fact, it's going to happen within a 20-year period. So everything that you had to say was very, very informative, and it's excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, uh, Alexander, can you introduce yourself, please? Just okay. one minute, so... Who you sure. are, what you do. Um, my name's Alexander. Um, people call me Alex, um, short for Alexander. And uh, yeah, I, I wear several hats at, at Home Life. I'm, I work at Home Life uh, Corporate Head Office as the Chief of Talent Acquisition. Um, and um, <clears throat> I also work at the uh, branch level, at the retail level, as the sales manager for um, Andrew Zimmerman's uh, brokerage called Home Life Zimmerman. Um, so, uh, I'm responsible for a lot of, you know, the training and uh, the growth, onboarding and recruitment of uh, new agents. And um, and I find, you know, definitely found this really useful to hear is also a really, you know, really good friend of mine and, uh, you know, fellow FRI. And uh, there's a lot for me to learn from someone like to hear. And that's why I'm I'm uh, trying to get myself more involved in these um, workshops and webinars of yours to hear because it's really informative. It's really refreshing, and you're you're you know touching on a lot of relevant topics. Thank you very much, uh, Alex. Uh, also, I am conducting now seminar for the realtors in their brokerage. If you ha have lots of episode, and uh, it, I was uh, scheduled for CIPS uh, exam, but unfortunately, not many people registered because of holiday. But I conduct a lot of seminars, and if your broker need anything, you let me know. I'd be more than happy to come and uh, explain. Okay, Seha, okay. you going to say something about yourself for one minute, please? Turn your video on. Yeah, I am. Uh, hey, hi, everyone. Um, I have uh, been working with uh, Tahir since a month, right? It's it's almost a month. Yeah, almost month, yeah. We started working together. Uh, prior to it, uh, I have uh, banking and finance experience for almost 20, 25 years for now. And I, I am new to Canada. All five years I've worked with TD and CIBC Bank. So this mortgage is completely new for me. But yes, the real estate and mortgage, I'm quite inclined to it. And I will need Tahir's help to on board on this. Thank you very Journey. much. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll, we'll there to help you and, uh, you know, hopefully you will be very successful in financing side. And yeah. this is why I included all the people because they, they know that this project management or, or land development is not a simple process. Everybody from engineering, from acquisition of land, we are realtors, we buy land and people pay small money to the home inspector. Sometimes they don't know what the heck they're talking about. This is very important. This is a development project. I mean, you need to hire engineers, last couple of thousand, but I save you any future, any complaints or 
repercussion for not performing due diligence. And uh, our uh, RICO, uh, Real Estate Council of Ontario, that is uh, regulating a real estate profession in, in, in Ontario, uh, and Trust and Real Estate Services Act, we have to follow very strict uh, rules and code of ethics. Due diligence is a top priority. And you always hire other professionals who are competent to perform the work, not yourself. If you are realtor only, you only talk about real estate. Uh, if you are a mortgage agent, you can talk about mortgage agent or broker. But if you are you know, not have, for example, I wear all these hats because I'm a principal broker can express mortgage. I'm a broker record for city priority in brokerage. I am now construction, uh, uh, Tixon Construction Inc. I'm a licensed builder with HCRA. So I have a license which I show you guys. But you can go to Tixon's TIQ, stand for my name, first uh, initial, TIQ, Tahir Iqbal, Qureshi and Sons, dot CA. Everything is there. And it's very, very important that, that we help and work with each other and do business. And uh, there is always a referral program where you get some fee for that. Robert, we're going to end with your program. You want to introduce yourself a little bit? Robert? All right. So I, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you very much for attending our uh, land development webinar. It will be posted on YouTube channel. And uh, then you can watch and feel free to share uh, with your friends. There are, I think right now, 437 episodes on, on, on YouTube. And it's, it's, it's free, everyone to learn and share. If they have any questions, please put a feedback on, on the YouTube channel or call me directly. My number is 416-451-3489. Thank you very much uh, for uh, joining and have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.